Good morning, you wanna see the company I have with me today? Some uh, some friends here. And then there are quite a, quite a few more friends. Let's, let's uh, play with this again, let's see. There we go. There were an extreme amount uh, in this vicinity earlier today, so it's been my morning. I have um, a very important day today. I guess this is coming out on Christmas, so this is the final day of Vlogmas. Isn't that, like, that's weird, because I thought, oh my god, I don't know how I'm going to edit a video a day. Bitch, like, I can do anything. Capricorn Rising Live. We have a friend here, though. Good morning, sir. Today was literally one of the most exciting days ever. When I get to share like what I've been doing and everything happening in my life, it's gonna be so cool. It's not things that I can like, I don't know. It, it's just so many cool things happening and I'm so excited. It'll be like a few months, but looking back, like when you're seeing my stuff coming out, you'll know that that was going on during this time. So that's very exciting basically. Um, I wanted to talk quickly about the astrology of 2023 and how I would plan according to it because I've had so many clients over the past few days and all of them obviously are like, 2023, what's going on? Um, it's a little different than just the year ahead for the person because it's literally the year ahead given the time that we're at. So in 2023, the major thing to note is that there is not nearly, not nearly the level of challenge or marked insane chaos as there has been 2019 to 2020 two, I'd say. Um, 2020 to 2021 were definitely the most chaotic years, but 2022 as well had its fair share, especially with the eclipses. And coming up in 2023, there is not nearly the same level as marked concentration in the sky in the same chaotic way. I will get into when there is some chaos, but not nearly as much as like you would have seen 2020 to 2021, 2022, etc. So the beginning of the year in January is a really good year. It's a really good month to literally kickstart and move forward. It's not just because it's, you know, the first month. The calendar does not have anything to do with astrology. The calendar is arbitrary and a division. Astrology has many different cycles that overlap, so it's not based on the calendar at all. Astrology is based on astronomy. The calendar is our categorical system. So January is actually a really good month to move forward or get things going. So think about January is literally the kickstarting off month, specifically the final two weeks. The first two weeks are a little bit slow, so use that to get like your ducks in order, so to speak. I've never used that saying. I sound so fucking white, like for Pete's sake. Um, <laughs> um, so I'd say the second two weeks of January, great time to move forward with things. February, I did not mention in my yearly forecast because it is a more boring month, but it is a beautiful month, namely the Pisces new moon on February 20th. I just did my video on that for everyone, for just the collective. That is a beautiful new moon. So February, specifically the end, is great for launching anything that is dream oriented or outside of realism. I know I will be using the end of February specifically for creative things if possible. So February, think of it as a recovery continuation month and then beautiful at the end of the month. March is where things do definitely get a little bit more interesting. There's both some major challenges and major confusion. So use March not to necessarily launch anything, to but continue on with your dream. Do not let the fog, the confusion, or the doubt creep in. It will be a more confusing, intrusive thoughts kind of a month. Do continue on with the dream because there is really beautiful energy in March as well. April is really abundant and very nice. We'll have Jupiter and Venus conjoining in Aries. This is great for taking risk or for taking a leap of faith and fully putting yourself out there. So from what you've been working on, I would fully project that out into the world in the April time frame. May is when the eclipse season happens and when the final bout of chaos, I would say, is taking place. So and I'll go back and explain some of the more longer term things for the whole first part of the year as well, but I'm going to wrap this up with the May time period for the first part of the year, basically. It goes like January until May and then June onward is a different vibe, basically. So in May, there's a lunar eclipse in Scorpio on May 5th. This is the final letting go or wrapping up of the eclipses in Taurus and Scorpio. So in your chart, look at what's been happening under the eclipses. Um, that This would have happened last April, May, and then this October, November, and it will have the final saga next May. That activation in your chart, 
the final nail in the coffin event will be early May. So for example, the eclipses for me have been in my fifth houses and 11th houses. It's been chaos around like creativity and also PR and just media and the perception of me in the media. I'm looking for one final straw, one final blast early May of next year. You can expect similar in the Taurus and Scorpio area of your chart, namely the Scorpio area. Then on May 19th, there is a new moon happening in Taurus. It's not technically an eclipse because it's too far away from the nodes, but it is a beautiful new moon in Taurus with the sun, moon, Uranus, Jupiter, Mercury. There's a ton on the north, like near the north node. There's a ton going on that shows very sudden growth oriented energy happening in Taurus. Check the Taurus house in your chart for what is the lifting off out of the eclipse cycle. That eclipse cycle and those signs is basically done. What is the next chapter of what you're building there in your life? Look for a very sudden but very positive new beginning happening in the foundations of the Taurus house in your chart. This is in my fifth house of creativity and also romance and dating. I'm expecting a pretty solid creative breakthrough, namely with things that I've been working on for um, just really hard over the past few weeks and I'm really excited about. I think that May could be a pretty big breakthrough for me. And if that happens, I will come back to this fucking video and, you know, quote it and relish in my appreciation of my prediction. Um, June is a little bit more of a slowing down month. Um, May is the big like chaos kind of upheaval, but not in a challenging way, more in just like a disruptive way. June is recuperation, you could say. July is when there's definitely a shift. So I'll go back and talk about the more long-term things happening in the first half of the year. The first thing is that Saturn will be in Pisces from March uh, onward. And this shows that more of the challenges, structure, and boundaries as a collective will be around beliefs and likely around uh, bodily spread of things. This might sound a little bit weird and I'll do a full video on it when the time comes, but Saturn is a planet of structure and blockage and it was in Aquarius during all this social distancing BS and also during a lot of legislative considerations for free speech and online moderation. So Saturn, boundary, Aquarius, which can be thought of as like the collective uh, intertwining of technical matters, so social distancing, boundaries between people, and also questions around censorship and the media online, big things. Saturn enters Pisces, I think it's going to be larger questions than we already even have around um, bodily autonomy, things like maybe vaccines, uh, abortion, uh, questions around those topics, and also belief-oriented boundaries. Are we allowed to practice certain belief systems? Do we need to um, hold boundaries around some? I, I'm not, you know, I, I, I'm not taking any, this is not about me at all here, I'm just talking about Saturn and Pisces. That will emerge as more relevant from March onward. Also, March until May is a very crucial period in this year because it is a preview of Pluto and Aquarius. Pluto will be in Aquarius from March until May. After May, it will then retrograde back into Capricorn until 2024, basically. So think of March until May as the preview for the larger themes of Pluto and Aquarius, which will likely involve social transformation and revolution and also technocracy. This is not all good or all bad. So I know that the more, you could say like, uh, like communist leaning people might be really excited about the social upheaval, um, but also it comes with the side of technocracy um so it's both the good of like more freedom in terms of identity and also the more challenging aspect of like power in the hands of few and a lot of technological tyranny um this will be most relevant like i said march until may as a preview for when pluto is firmly in aquarius for 2024 onward Starting again back in July, July is when the nodes shift into Aries and Libra. And Jupiter will have been in Aries over the first half of the year, basically. So Aries and the spirit of individualism and doing your own thing will be really, really present over the first half of the year. Like, do your own fucking thing. Live your own life. No one cares about you. Literally, no one cares about you. Like, do your own fucking thing. No one is judging. No one gives a shit. Um, that's the really liberating thing, is that, like, no one gives a shit. No one gives a shit. No one knows watching. No one gives a shit. Um, so do your own fucking thing. So the growth of doing your own thing in the first half of the year will then get accelerated when Jupiter enters Aries in the second half of the year. So look at the Aries part of your chart and that will be accelerated. I'm a little interested because it'll be in my fourth house of family and like home. So I wonder if, I don't know, I've been thinking about, like I've said, um, of course I'm running in New York right now, but like getting, like renting a home in LA maybe next. Um, uh, not a big home or anything, but like 
I can feel that I probably need to be in LA starting um, next year or sometime, so I might be having to look into that, even though I love my place in New York. I don't know, I'll sort it the fuck out, but that could show that it urges me to kind of ground and do that. Um, so the North Node in Aries and the South Node in Libra will show focusing more on independence for the second half of the year due to the, like, Jupiter there, the first part of the year, shows um, growth of a project or growth of opportunity. The North Node then shows acceleration and commitment in that part of the, your chart for the second half of the year. So put in the work and take the opportunities the first half of the year and then ride what comes from that and ride the momentum the second half of the year. The second half of the year, I would say, is not quite as eventful or quite as uh, intense. Um, the next really relevant time that will be taking place is in October when the eclipse season starts in Aries and Libra. And there's a solar eclipse in Libra in October that shows a really important catalyst new beginning involving a letting go for a partnership. Look at the Libra house in your chart and expect a letting go that leads into a greater partnership in that area of your life. It's a really great time for more harmony and unity around that time period. Um, and then we do end the year with a Venus retrograde in Capricorn, but it's not, if I remember correctly, but that's not really the end of the world. So if I were you, I would start off the year with a bang. I would explore my creative projects in February. I would then take that energy onward and drown out the confusion or the intrusive thoughts in March. April looks like an abundant time to really relish and enjoy yourself. May will be the catalyst for the new foundations of, uh, of your life in the Taurus uh, Scorpio axis. Um, and then carry that momentum of focusing on yourself throughout the second half of the year. Uh, but first part of the year is really, really go time. So I hope that this was helpful. Um, this was like a really amazing day for me uh, in particular. So I feel very inspired. I, once again, uh, because my day was so amazing and I spent so many just like hours working on some really cool things, I got to air one late today and I uh, did not get to use the hot bar, which uh, was closed because it closes at nine. I think air one usually closes at 10, but the hot bar itself closes at nine. So I always try to get there before nine, but I'm like stupid. I get there at like 9.05 or something and it's already closed. Um, but I did pick up some things. This is over quite a few days. So this is not all for today, but what I got today is Japanese sweet potatoes because I had not had these in a minute and these are fire. These are literally like my favorite single food ever probably. Um, got spicy Asian tofu sticks. I prefer tempeh, but the tofu sticks are also really good. I got the yam, uh, the kale and yam salad. This is like my second favorite salad by them. I got the turmeric cauliflower because I couldn't get the normal buffalo cauliflower because they were also out of it because of course. Um, pickled cabbage, which I put on everything. Uh, these kelp noodles with pesto sauce. I had not had these kelp noodles. I like kelp noodles a lot, but I've not had these. And then also uh, shredded kale and cabbage, which I also like. And then picked up a Reese's thingamajiggy. I'm going to get off to bed. It's been a great 25 days with you all. We'll see if I do it again next year, maybe. Um, I feel like it's a tradition now, so I kind of want to keep it up. Many exciting things going on, and I hope that you all enjoy your 2023. Merry fucking Christmas.